In today's episode, we look at the answers to 10 gardening questions asked by our viewers. So the first question comes from GYUUK and the question is whether BT and spinosad are safe for you and are they safer than chemicals? Well, BT and spinosad are approved for organic gardening since they are natural and they have the OMRI symbol listed which means it's approved for organic gardening. Now if you want to be safer you can use neem oil which is uh, natural and it controls a broad range of insects as well as fungal diseases on your plants. Now of course the best thing is to not use any insecticide at all. Just hand pick whatever you see and then use preventive measures like these nets to keep most garden pests away. Our next question comes from SHTF West Coast Prepper and the question is whether hybrid and GMO are the same. Well, it's not the same. Hybrid crops are created by natural selection. So for example, plants with great stems are combined with plants with excellent fruits to create a plant that has characteristics of both, which has strong stems as well as great fruit. So GMO is not the same as hybrid. GMO is something that's not even available to home gardeners. They're only available for commercial growers. The next question comes from Cuddly Bear and the question is how large is your garden and do you grow enough to sustain your family without having to buy from the store? Now my backyard is about 1500 square feet. You can see that I have some containers here followed by the raised beds area which is pretty much most of the space that I grow my vegetables in and it's about 192 square feet after I redesigned the beds and that's the bulk of my growing area. And this is the fruit trees area it's about 350 square feet of growing space and there's also an avocado tree on the side. Now do we grow enough to sustain our family? Not really. We are vegetarians and although we grow a lot of fruits and vegetables at home we still have to supplement by buying fresh produce from the grocery stores. The next question comes from Juan de la Cruz and the question is compost is hard to find where I live. Can I just use some coconut core and soil? Not really. For any kind of potting mix you should not be using soil because soil is going to make your potting mix very heavy. So the ideal combination is to use peat moss, perlite and compost. If you don't have compost, try using manure or try using worm castings. By doing this, you'll get a very lightweight potting mix. The next question comes from Kumara Mac and the question is about how the potting mix, the recent potting mix that I posted compares with the 30, 30, 30, 10 potting mix that I've used in other cases. Now I used to prepare a lot of potting mix with the 30, 30, 30, 10 which means uh, one part of peat moss, perlite, compost and then worm castings. However, the one that I posted in this video that you see here, the easy potting mix, it uses three parts of peat moss and small portions of perlite and manure or worm castings. This is actually a very cheap mix and it's a lot cheaper than creating the 30-30-30-10 mix. And it also gives great results, which is why I highly recommend that you try it out. And in the same video, there's a question by Linda Gray. And the question is whether the manure has to be chicken and whether you can use any other kind of manure. Now, yes, you can use different kinds of manure. And some of the manures have different characteristics. Chicken manure is very hot in the sense that you need to use less of it compared to something like steered manure. But I would recommend limiting the amount of manure you add to your soil. I've had some weird results uh, when I was trying to see how hot manure can be. So as you can see here, I've planted a couple of plants and these are very similar plants. One is growing up in straight up steer manure and the other one is growing in a mix of steer manure and perlite, which just provides additional drainage. But what you will see is that by using a lot of manure or just pure manure in this case, you will have some weird results. Some plants might grow well, but most of the plants are going to just burn and die. 
and as you can see here you can see that one of these plants has grown well and the other plant is pretty much dead so yes you can use manure like rabbit manure or horse manure I recommend that you go with the small quantities of chicken manure or horse and rabbit manure are generally better the next question comes from Raghu and the question is that I've started backyard gardening can you please make a video on what crop should be grown during different months of the year and I do have a series of videos which specify what you need to do during different parts of the year and if you check out my monthly series I will have a link to the playlist at the end of this video and you can pretty much know what to do each month of the year now you might have to adjust according to the weather in your area but this is a good guideline on what you do during different months of the year our next question comes from Becky Zahid and the question is I have some plants in very large containers and some plants in smaller containers how can I make sure that the smaller plants don't get too much water and the large plants just get enough now this is a great question and I've covered this in my video of the drip emitter systems for containers and pretty much what you do is depending on the size of your container you choose your emitter so for smaller containers you will choose an emitter that doesn't let out a lot of water and for larger containers you need to use emitters that spray out a lot of water you can even use micro sprinklers which are used for raised beds you can use them in containers as well so there are a lot of options and this is one way you can ensure that your containers get the amount of water they need our next question comes from MEU and the question is after I prune the mint plant can I use the unused roots as compost now you can put pretty much anything that you want in your compost there are a lot of options dead leaves scraps from your fruits and vegetables that you consume but something like mint is not something that I would recommend putting in your compost bin so even after you prune your mint plant it could be possible that when you put this in your compost the remnants could come up as new plants since mint is a very invasive plant I don't recommend that you add chopped mint leaves into your compost bin and our final question comes from Joy Mary Prepper and the question is that I'm in California and right now the white flies have had their way in my garden and I've used all organic stuff but can't get rid of them can you please advise now I've covered getting rid of white flies in one of my previous videos there are a lot of ways you can get rid of white flies the easiest way is to just use water and spray them out of the plants and you can also use these yellow sticky white fly traps which work great for white flies especially if you have a lot of them now you can use them in tandem and that will give you the most effective white fly control so there we have it folks that was our Q&A session if you like this video please do give us a thumbs up and if you like to see more videos like these do let us know in the comments box below We'll see you again soon. Happy gardening.